link up in the top right corner. I got it. I'll go ahead and load it. Okay, yeah. thanks, Cheryl. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. My internet's been wonky all morning. I think it's the storm. Some steps. Okay. Are we recording? We're recording. Um, the, the, the plan itself needs to detail the support on how to increase OER adoption. It needs to describe how faculty will be, uh, how information will be communicated to faculty about Cool for Ed, which is the online resource with a series of open ed materials available. Um, the plan must include the number of academic departments and the course sections where OER will be adopted. And it has to uh, demonstrate the average or the anticipated uh, cost savings for students. The percentage must be over 30% uh, and that needs to be demonstrated in the plan. Uh, it also, the plan also has to spell out how the faculty de development programs that exist on the campus will be used or enhanced and then how access to OER will be provided including uh, the availability and where hard copies will be available for students who or wish to use hard copies. Uh, you also have to include in the grant or in the uh, plan the amount of the grant you're asking for uh, which we'll discuss in detail on the next slide. So these are all spelled out in the RFP that's available on the Cool for Ed website. Uh, we also sent that information out to all of the community college senate presidents and curriculum chairs about two weeks ago and uh, it can be uh, resent. We're in the process of writing a rostrum article as well that will be published in April with all the specifics. Uh, so questions about that? I am not doing this entire presentation. We divided it up because I have to go into interviews. So I'm doing the first half, first part. No, I am not talking the entire time, I promise. Look, it's our graphic again. Yay! <laughs> All right. So grants themselves cannot be more than $1,000 per course identified in the plan, and the participation will only count if the student savings are greater than 30%. So the course has to demonstrate that the savings will be more than 30%, 30% or more. Uh, from what the original cost of texts and materials were in the class. Um, the minimum grant will be $10,000. Colleges have to have at least 10 course sections that are going to do this. The maximum will be $50,000, so a, a maximum uh, of 50 classes. And there is $3 million available uh, to spread between the two segments, between the CSUs and the CCCs. Uh, which, is, as, as we had indicated by our remedial math instructor Barbara Olowski last week, means that theoretically if every college requests um, monies, there will be some colleges that do not get them. Uh, there is a maximum of 100 grants available and there are 136 community colleges and CSUs combined. So uh, I know that there are schools that may not choose to participate in this particular round. Uh, or that may only choose to participate for a small amount for 10 classes or 15 sections. And let's make this clear, and this question came up last week a number of times, these are course sections, not yeah. classes, in the sense that if you identify your English 1A or the equivalent, your introductory English course, college level English course, as one of the courses that has the potential for doing this, if you have 50 sections of English 1A, in theory, you could try to do that. Although we do kind of want to see them spread a little bit more among departments, but um, it's course sections rather than in classes in the more broad context. So hopefully that's clear. So questions about that? Because you know what's coming next, don't you? The graphic. <laughs> Dolores, can I just add one thing there? Yeah, go ahead, um, please. When they're, talking about, when they're talking about the cost of materials, it's basically taking the cost uh, the, from the previous semester off the um, the text uh, the um, the bookstore uh, website. You know, the, using that cost, people would say, should we take it? You know, the cost of the textbook from Amazon. Should we take the cost of the textbook from this? No. When you're comparing it, take it from the uh, from the bookstore list from the previous semester. Thank you, Dan. That's a really good uh, point because it's not the cheapest that the student can find the text. 
or a previous edition, it's what the cost of the text was at the bookstore the previous term. Thank you, Dan, for that clarification. Now we can have the graphic again. <laughs> um, so the OER Council, on which there are three representatives from the CSUs, the CCCs, and the UCs, plus a chair who is from San Jose State, um, are going to be the ones that will be reviewing these plans. Uh, we are providing this expertise on existing OER and best practices for adoption through a series of webinars uh, and office hours that will be held from now until June. Uh, we will review the campus plans over the summer uh, and select up to 100 plans as per the legislation to receive that initial grant between $10,000 and $50,000 per school. And then we will submit those plans to the CSU uh, Chancellor's Office in August of 2016. We have been told, and Leslie, if you, since you're on there, you could jump in if this is incorrect, but I believe the information we were given last week was that it was anticipated that the monies would go to the colleges by November. Yeah, we're hoping even sooner, but that's a good, that's a good, that's very last, at the very end of the spectrum. Okay. Yeah. I, I tend to be the more pessimistic when it comes to money, except when it comes to shopping. So um, those monies would be paid out during the fall term. Uh, and by the beginning of November was what Jerry Hanley at the chan from the Chancellor's Office said. OK, so just because you missed the graphic last time, here it is one more time. Uh, and now I believe I'm turning it over to Cheryl. Correct. So the question is often asked, where do we find OER textbooks? Some folks are already very familiar with some of the places they can look, but many of our faculty have really little to no idea. And so being able to point them towards a single source rather than broad searches is very helpful. And for that, the Cool for Ed website is a tremendous resource for our faculty, especially those that don't know much, but really for all of us um, when it comes to OER sources that are available. It's Cool for Ed and uh, .org. And it is a product of uh, Stein bill, Steinberg's uh, 1098, or I'm sorry, 1052 bill in 2012. And it's been an effort the last couple of years by the council to identify 50 courses that have high impact across UC, CSU, and community colleges, and then to identify uh, OER textbooks for those 50 courses. And so it's listed um, by, and I probably changed slides. Let me see if I can change slides. There we go. So 50 courses with selected e-textbooks. Um, they Textbooks that are on there have been reviewed. And, and we say that with a caveat that some have been reviewed. And it, you, you definitely would want to see those reviews because they're not very highly regarded e-textbooks. Or in other cases, they've been reviewed by uh, folks across all three systems. And they have been regarded as the comparable or, or very high quality uh, textbooks. And so that's an important thing to think about. It's nice to have. Uh, other faculty have already looked at these, and it's also nice to kind of get the comparison between some perspectives, UC versus CSU versus community colleges. Cool for Ed also has lots of other resources for us, including um, links to all the information relative to 798. You may already know that, the links to all the webinars that are available, the schedule of future office hours uh, that the council will be holding for um, interested people. Um, but another piece is faculty showcases where community college, CSU, and UC faculty have talked about um, what they've done as they've adopted free and open resources. And uh, it's interesting, again, to see some case examples. It may give some folks, some of our folks, some ideas. It's a nice place to point some of our interested uh, and intrigued faculty towards. Um, Nicole Fred also links to, or, or you can also use the Complete Merlot Library, which is an incredible resource for all kinds of shared resources uh, for teaching, not just textbooks, but support resources as well. And you can do a federated search through Merlot um, with that link, fedsearch.merlot.org. Uh, that way it's searching across multiple OER sources online uh, to come up with a um, much more complete list of possibilities for folks. So again, they don't have to go search all kinds of individual places. The council has worked really hard to get Cool for Ed into place, but then the council right now in support of 798 is also working very hard 
to make sure that we have support and information available for all of you that are interested in it um, to share with your colleges and, and to help to educate others. And so just some of the things we're trying to make sure we do, we're working communication and outreach, doing things like the webinars today, um, memos about 798, the sample resolutions for the different systems, uh, different emails and flyers. Uh, we're working with training and, and professional development. Uh, the webinars are a piece of that, some how-to videos that we're working on and we'll have up soon, uh, regional workshops perhaps, um, the help and support services. You can certainly um, look to the council for help, but also your local reference librarians are a tremendous asset, as well as your campus technology support. And we're, I think, talking all community colleges today, but the CSUs within their um, affordable learning solutions uh, contacts have some tremendous resources as well. Um, when it comes to thinking about uh, implementing OER a little bit more broadly across your campuses, there definitely needs to be some thought about how to provide print copies, because some of our students uh, only feel comfortable so far with their print copies. And a couple of the things that you can do is talk to your bookstore. And while we've heard some folks say that their bookstore doesn't want to have that conversation because it potentially cuts into their bottom line, we're also hearing many say that their bookstores are open to that conversation. And so hopefully you can find that your own bookstores are open to finding ways to help have them help provide printed copies of our OER text. Um, OpenStax also, you can order directly print copies, um, and then we're working on trying to come up with some additional strategies. We've talked you know, in different places about making sure that your um, academic support centers have some way of, of printing with students uh, in the community college systems. eop and could certainly help with that. CalWORKs could help with that. Uh, but if you look more central, like towards your bookstore, uh, you don't have to duplicate efforts. Um, as far as supporting the library and discovery and curation, really trying to help folks find OER materials. Um, the Cool for Ed Library, as I said, is a tremendous resource. Uh, you can also set up course portfolios in Merlot and can search through other course e-portfolios in Merlot. And uh, you can use the folks on the council as a resource as well. Um, technology services. I definitely would encourage you to link to Cool for Ed uh, in your LMS so that faculty and staff have an access to it. Um, Merlot will also link with most learning, or most if not all learning management systems. I'm not as familiar with it. And then campus coordination, I think one of the biggest efforts for those of us that are looking at applying for the, the grant funding is that we've got to leverage our existing leaders. We've got to bring in some new conversation um, folks in, into the, or new folks into the conversation. Um, but then also the Cool Voices Online has some support uh, from colleagues at other colleges too. So you can talk about coordination on your own campuses, and I think that's the tremendous effort on this. Uh, but then also you can reach out to some colleagues through, um, again, the council, through the voices uh, on the oh, Cool for Ed, and uh, see what other people are doing or how they're maybe accomplishing some of the things that you're experiencing as barriers or roadblocks. And one more, just a, a quick overview of the timeline relative to 798. Um, looking past a little bit, the proposals are due June 30th. Uh, it doesn't matter when you come in before that. Uh, it'll be uh, a final submission date of June 30th. We're not doing rolling reviews. They will all be received June 30th, and then the committee will meet or the council will meet this summer to uh, evaluate them and score them and, and determine who uh, gets the money, as it says, for September 30th. At that point, schools will be notified, notified by CSU, you know, who will be receiving money and is being awarded, and then following that into October, as late as October, early November, colleges will be getting the money. But as Leslie said, um, hopefully that's a worst case scenario and that the money comes in uh, to the colleges as sometime in September once uh, awards have been determined. Uh, colleges will have to submit a progress report uh, next June 30th, 2017. Uh, which means that you will have to, in some way, conduct your part of your program this year. Some colleges uh, at the conference last week talked about not starting their efforts until January. Others have a provisional plan in place for fall. You've really got to give some thoughts to that locally. Um, you know, are, you, are some of your sections, your 10 to 50 sections, fall or spring or both? Um, certainly need to give that some thought. But no matter how many, or whether it's one semester or both, a progress report is due next year. And I think at this point, it's Dan's turn.
It's Dan's turn. Okay. And tying into uh, the aspect about when to start, uh, I know we were saying the money wouldn't be coming, you know, at, at the earliest, probably September 30th. That doesn't preclude from starting your your program in sure. in uh, fall semester, even though you say, well, but wait a minute, I'm starting in August. I'm going to start before I get the money. Try to work on, on the faith system that uh, hopefully that we will be, the, the projects will be funded, or all the projects submitted will be funded, or a good number of them. But also remembering that it, it's not just for the money on this, it's really uh, using OER for the betterment of the students. So hopefully that if you were thinking of doing it in the fall that you might continue with your plans to do it uh, start in the fall. Uh, but again, you can start it in the, um, excuse me, in the January term, be that a quarter or a semester term. But you can start sometime then also. Um, I'm going to with a slide here is just some hints to, to work on. Uh, definitely using the Cool for Ed website, uh, the RFP and the evaluation rubric on there, and the, the timeline, the background resources, and the, um, the toolkit are all in that uh, through coolfored.org. Cheryl, can you do the next slide? Because I can't. Yeah, I'll get it. I'm not a mod. I'm, 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 I'm not. So I'll these are just, you know, how to find the stakeholders. As, as we were saying, definitely uh, mobilizing the faculty, making presentations to uh, various communities on campus. Uh, I've already done it uh, working with, uh, I, I mentioned it uh, two weeks ago to our academic senate. Uh, we have another meeting this week I'm going to be bringing up there. I mentioned it at our curriculum committee, not so much that, um, not so much kind of warning them about, but well, more so to reach another group of faculty, but also to find out from uh, faculty members what's happening with this, and you know, so they know something about um, about OER. It's just spreading the the wealth around. Um, the CSUs definitely have uh, an advantage. One thing they uh, each of the colleges does, each of the campuses does have the affordable learning solutions um, on their campus, and if you are with the CSU, I would advise you to definitely take a look into that. Um, also, on in the toolkit number one, which is um, on the Cool for Ed website, the case studies and published research, the faculty stories, uh, these testimonials are just uh, wonderful. We have had uh, good luck with. Um, as uh, Dolores had mentioned earlier, Barbara Lasky, who's the Dean of um, uh, um, Basic Skills and OER for uh, the Online Ed Initiative, um, is a pioneering author in uh, OER in, in the statistics textbook. And it's great to have her seeing her, uh, seeing her in person and hearing her testimonies, but also having the chance to um, read about the successes she's had. Next slide. Okay, some of these things, as we said before, you know, working with your bookstore, and this is, uh, I just want to mention that I think, it, it sounds like it's been varying. I, I think I've been having good luck. Um, this is definitely an opportunity to work with our bookstores. Uh, in the past, over the last 10, 15 years that I've been involved with uh, statewide things, uh, if we've ever had a textbook affordability um, initiative or something, uh, a lot of times we've had opposition from the bookstore because we feel that we're trying to shut them out completely, or it seemed like any affordability initiative was just get rid of the bookstore. I think this OER is, is not in that aspect because, we're, as I think Cheryl said before, we're working with OER to maybe get to get print copies of some of these materials. Because a lot of times on these OER materials, they are available online for free or for low cost, but again, many students want to have a print copy. If we can work with our bookstores to look at low cost copies, you know, black and white copies as opposed to color prints of of the information that breaks out. Working with the librarians, um, I am a librarian, and this is something definitely we can work with, is, is helping our colleagues in the classroom to find OER textbooks and such. And also a big thing is to, uh, to locate supplemental information. Um, I had the example of, of uh, a faculty in my college that was having problems with uh, one of the textbooks, uh, one of the um, OER textbooks. He, he felt it was kind of weak in a couple of sections. Well, that's the type of thing that um, can discuss with your uh, your campus librarian, your your group of campus librarians, because they we have a wonderful set of resources that are already available in the college for free, uh, free or low cost, and we can create links to work on that to maybe supplement the um, the uh, OER textbook. Working with the educational technology groups, uh, this ties in also with the um, 
the uh, learning management system, the uh, the online edu uh, in the community colleges, the online education initiative is looking at uh, working on making um, online courses more available for students. And one of the aspects is uh, looking towards a common uh, course management system, and it was selected was Canvas. Uh, we are working on. I happen to be on the library services work group with OEI on working on incorporating library services and different things into the Canvas system. And I think we can definitely work on OER materials with that. So there will definitely be a link between OER, library services, and the, uh, the course management system. Next screen. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm also working with your student association, uh, getting in contact with the president. Um, I attended a conference about three or four weeks ago. It was uh, put out by the um, the Community College League of California, which is for the CEOs and trustees, but many student leaders were there. And at our presentation on OER, they were just totally excited about it. So I think we're going to be, you know, as, as Dolores said, the statewide student senate has uh, definitely come up, has come forward with um, with information on on the initiative, on the uh, incentive plan. Next screen. Okay, so help is available. As we said, signing up for more of these informational webinars. It seems I have a feeling. It seems like almost every day through March and part of April, there's another webinar you can uh, go to. We also have uh, an FAQ, frequently asked questions on this. As I said, again, the more information you can get from Cool for Ed, um, it'd be great. And as Dolores I think mentioned, uh, the nine members of the um, the council are available for for uh, com making comments on proposed drafts and such. Next next slide. Uh, this was mentioned before, you know, the required language for uh, for the resolution from the Academic Senate. Uh, definitely using the required language. That is the required language. That's the language from AB 798 itself. Um, I think that's about it. Just, you know, you just include a whereas and avoid this. Uh, and now I think it's off no, the channel for a little while. <laughs> All right. So, just some questions and, and questions that have come up, and some suggestions that we have. And folks, for one, will say it's daunting to find campus partners, and that's primarily referring to what faculty can we work with, and, and who might be uh, open to this, or you know, where do we start as we try to figure out what ten or more sections we might identify for uh, OER use. And really, uh, one strategy that can work is to look for the disciplines that are represented in the Cool for Ed reviews especially those that are more uh, highly uh, rated reviews, they're, they're meant to be those high impact courses that articulate with CSUs and UCs. And often because they're high impact, they're higher enrollment, or there's more sections of them. And so we might be able to get a couple different courses and have you know, reach 10, 15, 20 sections uh, with just two or three courses identified, depending on the discipline that we're looking at. Um, also, again, if they're more GE and uh, transfer based, we're more likely to find a better textbook, at least from some of the early reviews that I've looked at. Um, another question that comes up, can we include the courses or sections that are already using OER textbooks? Because fortunately, some of our colleagues already are. Uh, but unfortunately, the answer to that is no, because if, there, if, a, if a professor is already using an OER textbook in a section, we won't be able to demonstrate the 30% savings unless somehow they're using an OER text um, as one of the multiple texts required for a course and their savings by moving some of the others to OER, then potentially. But if it's simply saying that we're using a Psych 1 OER text now, can we apply that to our 10 or more sections? The answer is going to be no because there won't be any cost savings. Um, but you know, kind of, kind of see if there's a, if they're using a low cost platform and can move to a, a free text, uh, then that may show some cost savings. So that's a possibility, uh, but the, the challenge will be coming up with that 30% demonstrated cost savings. Um, so for those that are already using OER but aren't included in the courses, how can we engage them? Because they can be some of the biggest advocates on campus yes. uh, as far as speaking to what OER can, can do for them as instructors, what OER can do for their students in increasing equity and access, and what are their experiences, their challenges, uh, you know, the things that they've done to overcome those challenges. They can be tremendous resources. Um, so how can we engage them? We don't want to just leave them out there because they can't, we can't use their sections uh, to count towards the grant. And so, 
um, get them get them involved as workshop leaders. Uh, get them to share their story on campus. You know, get them to talk as Dan has been talking to curriculum committees, to departments uh, at their meetings, uh, to the Senate, uh, wherever they can talk, even the ASB. Uh, so that the more folks that get a sense of how OER has been used, uh, the more folks that might be thinking about how they can use it with, for their own courses. And you can use uh, the grant funding in the long run to end up paying for those workshops. So those folks can get something out of uh, having already used OER. And then we really got to give some thought to sustainability. Yeah, um, Questions? It's sort of strange for me because um, one of the things that's coming up in, in uh, with a lot of the faculty that I'm talking to are they're interested, but they're not sure they can they can guarantee the switch. So is it is it are, are we able to say in the grant proposal that we might move this many sections in the spring because that department's going to look at OER in the fall? We talked some about this at the conference last week because a similar question came up, and I mean it's in a grant when when we. We've got to have folks who are, are pretty certain that they can move to OER text for the fall or the spring if we're going to account them and identify them as a section. Um, and, and you'll you'll be able to get the funding, uh, assuming that your your application is strong enough. Uh, you'll be able to get the funding for the number of sections that you've identified. Now, there's no consequence if not all of those sections end up using OER and achieving a 30% saving. But if it's just a matter of, hey, we're going to apply for 15 sections because my English people are thinking about it, that's not enough to apply for the grant. But if the English folks are saying, yeah, we've identified this text, we're going to give it a shot, um, and then maybe one or two of them d decide not to follow through, but most of your sections are getting changed, then I think you have a much stronger argument and, and you'll have a much stronger application in that case. Um, does that help? It does. Thank you very much. You bet. You don't have to. You're not going to have to pay money back. We we Aww. don't think bad thoughts of you. No, and then we realize. <laughs> I mean, we can go with good intentions, but, and it could be too that okay, if, if you have 15 original thoughts, sections okay. identified, and a few of those don't end up happening, there could be a chance by spring semester that you've got a couple other sections in another discipline or with another faculty member that might work. So you could actually end up, yeah, those first ones fell through. We, we realized that that text just, no matter how good our intentions, it's just not going to work for us. But you might be able to, to pick up and still accomplish more than you planned in another discipline. Um, so the, the intent is for us to have that money uh, to really develop the conversation and the resources to support faculty moving towards it with the faculty development and then the printing possibilities on campus. Um, and so, you know, there won't be consequences if we don't achieve exactly what our plan said we would achieve. Uh, but I think there'll be opportunity for us to flex that plan a little bit as we go once we have the funding. That's the reality of most of the kind of grant stuff or categorical stuff we get from the chancellor's office. <laughs> um, so talking about sustainability of, of, the, of the really using OER after funds have been used, um, something to keep in mind is we have student equity funding in our system, in the community college system. And you know, even if it came up as a response to folks who thought that maybe they needed more than the thousand dollars per section that 798 could grant them, uh, student equity could could certainly add to that amount of funding. Or if we can at least use 798 funding to get off the ground with an effort, then perhaps equity funding can be used uh, later to augment what was used uh, with 798 and extend the project further into the future. And so that's something to think about, that there could be other funding streams that could um, add to the amount of money you have to, to launch things or to help sustain things after 798 funding is exhausted. Um, there will also be an opportunity, depending on whether the three million is spent initially or not, there will be an opportunity to apply for bonus grants uh, in 2018. So that could be a, another piece of the sustainability um, project as far as moving it further into the future. Uh, if a college has done really well and has positive outcomes, they could apply for a bonus funding in 2018. But again, at, for the moment, that's dependent on whether or not there's leftover funding from this first round. Um, if there's no funding left, if we get the 100 and they've all gone for as much as they possibly can, 
and we spend $3 million, then there may not be bonus funding unless we get some future um, funding through, but um, it, it wouldn't be guaranteed right now. Something else that I, um, this is the time for questions. I just want to uh, maybe emphasize a couple of statements that we made beforehand. Um, we talked about, you know, a, a possible source of uh, locating sections and courses would be looking at the list of 50 courses from, that were generated by uh, SB 1052, the 50 courses that are um, high enrollment among the three uh, segments. You're not limited to those 50 courses. It's just a good starting out point, and it's probably a good PR thing to showing if, if you are reaching uh, students in these high demand courses. But again, you're not limited to those 50 courses identified sure. through SB 1052. That's, that's um, also a great question. I'm sorry? Nothing I want to mention. Yeah. Uh, and another thing was, uh, you know, we were mentioning, you know, uh, uh, the way the Money is the grant or the request is is calculated is one thousand dollars per section. Now that doesn't mean that you're spending um, one thousand dollars on that one section. That's just the way the allocation is happening. So it doesn't mean like, oh, if I'm getting a thousand dollars for because we're going to do a speech class, that doesn't mean that we devote all that money to the speech course or something. Or it does not go to the professor teaching that section. That is just the way that it's calculated, that it's allocated, that it's formulated. Um, another thing that came up. Um, that I've had in conversations this last week or so is articulation concerns. I've had an email from a community college articulation officer saying, oh, my, my Senate's talking about uh, OER. Is this going to affect um, articulation agreements with my CSU partners? And then there were definitely a, a lot of replies from CSU articulation officers saying, no, because our college, our campuses are also, they, they were doing links to uh, um, OER materials and such on their uh, CSU website, so that that does not that should not be a problem. If, if that concern comes up or if that question comes up at your college, that should not be a problem um, with articulation purposes, articulation needs. Uh, any other questions uh, at this time, or any concerns that we haven't um, addressed? And we just want to let you know that uh, the slides and the recording of this webinar will be available later today, available on the, on the AB 798 calendar through, um, I think, through Cool for Ed. And I would really ad advise you know, registering and signing up for uh, notifications uh, on the initiative and such. And then lower on that page is also just um, giving you a link, so some of the topics and different links on I'm going to, and as you, as you notice, most of them are cool for ed, links to cool for ed. Not all, but most of them are. So again, put cool for ed as uh, an important uh, website to, to use on your um And your in addition, um, there is, if you email, if you have a specific question for community college faculty, um, you can email oh, info yes, at ASCCC.org. Um, it's actually in the email that was sent out to the listservs a couple of weeks ago, and those questions will be directed uh, typically to me as the chair of the OER task force. And we are gathering our first meeting, I believe, two weeks from today. Is that right, Cheryl? 23rd? Yes. Um, for the OER task force, and we'll be talking not only about uh, AB 798, but we'll also be looking at some of the uh, potential things that are coming up, including the idea of the Z pathways, uh, those notion, the the idea of a of a yes. cost free or textbook cost free uh, degree or in the community colleges certificate. So we're not going to call them Z degrees; we're going to call them Z pathways. Um, but there are a variety of different things that the OER uh, task force will be looking at, and we'll be communicating those out to the community colleges. Uh, we are presenting at the Academic Academy next week about OER and equity. Uh, and we'll be presenting at uh, the plenary session as well if you're planning to attend that in Sacramento in April. All right, I just wanted to let you know I was still alive, and now I'm going to go interview possible candidates. So uh, thank you all very much, and thanks, Dan and Cheryl, for covering for me at the end, and I will talk to you guys soon. Great, thank you. Thanks. And just a quick check-in, Ron, you, Dan, Will. Is there anything that you were hoping to get today that we didn't cover, or is there anything else we can answer for each of you? 
I think she's in love. But Ron or Will, is there anything uh, that's still uh, a question in your mind for the moment, or are we doing all right? No, uh, thank you. Um, the, 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 just, the content was pretty similar to yesterday's webinar, so I oh, think that yeah. um, you okay. clarified some of the, the muddy points. And um, the only thing I need from you all is to help me identify faculty. So if you could provide a list of those faculty for me, that would be great. Gotcha. Kidding. Gotcha. Sorry. <laughs> so now the hard part. <laughs> Thank you. You bet. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Ron, anything uh, coming your way? No, nope, lots of good information. Left here. I'm just, Ron and Will, I'm just curious. Do you know who, uh, do you have a sense of who is using OER on your campuses yeah. at this time? I know you're both small colleges, so you might have that. I, mean, I think you have the advantage there of, of knowing. I, I'm in a, at a much larger college, and I, I really have no idea of the extent of OER. Uh, I think you, you two definitely have advantage on that. Small, kind of knowing yeah, that. there's a small amount. I think yeah. we have a pretty good sense. For, I'm sure there are a few who we don't know about. But um, if you're using OpenStax, it's pretty easy to figure that out, because we, we just walk through the bookstore right. and see the right. yellow or orange book. Books and um, so those are easy to identify. And that, that's, that, that works for me because I, I, I get the list of the books they're offering. It's like <laughs> 70 pages long, but I can, I can sort by publish. Yeah, being a little bigger, yes, you know, but I, I can I can I, I get the list from the bookstore and I can sort through that uh, by publisher. And you're right, uh, I notice OpenStax or or fl uh, Flat World or something. I know, oh, that might be a person that's. And that was the reason I, I asked the curriculum committee was just the you know, I had. I had 20 faculty there. I said, by the way, are, are any of you using or do any of you know people that are using uh, OER? And I, I did get a couple of names that way. And it doesn't hurt to also just alert the uh, curriculum committee in general because uh, as we're talking about the Z pathways, will probably be uh, definitely something tied in. Yeah, the I think it's, um, I think people just don't know how good the resources have become over the past couple of years. Yeah. That, um, so I think that will be a, a very positive part of this campaign. So um, anyway, thanks. Thank I, I think the testimonials yeah. is going to yeah. be the thing. All right. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. All right, Dan. I think we can probably log, stop the recording and log okay. out of this. All right. So oh, okay. Please. Sounds good. Yeah, see you, Dan. Thanks so much, everyone. Thank you, guys. Okay. Bye now. Bye. You want me to stop the recording, Teresa? Or are you okay? I'll do it. Thank you, thank and thanks you, for getting everything started for us. Hi. Yeah, we got. It was a little bit of a, <laughs> a little bit, a bit stress, stressful there for a minute, but we got it done. We got it. We got it going. All right. Thank yeah. you. Bye bye. Thank you.